Imagine not being able to read the paper because your hands were shaking. Imagine not being able to read newsprint as your world faded to black. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline Indiana, monthly report. With your host, Lee Martin, and co-host, Florence Myers McSwine. We want to welcome everyone to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana Monthly Report. This is a free service that's uh, sponsored by the National Federation of the Blind through our state talking book and braille library services. There's a myriad of ways that you can um, contact us, so continue to watch the screen and listen to the screen and gather our information uh, so that you can uh, get this free service uh, right in the palms of your fingers, uh, palms of your hands, should I say. So we have a great show today, and we want to talk a little bit about the National Federation of the Blind Newsline service. Florence, we have a couple of new uh, publications uh, added this month. Uh, you want to tell them a little bit about that? I certainly can. Uh, the first one that I'm very interested in is the one that is written by children all over the world. It's called Stone Soup. And then there's also ESPN magazine that's been included, as well as Sports Illustrated. And um, I don't want to forget that the Ebony magazine is a recent um, added publication. And um, I particularly, you know, I like the AARP magazine. That's been there for a while. I also like Guy Post. Uh, I like magazines that has to do with uh, better health, like Web, I mean, you know, WebMD magazine, as well as Diabetic for Forecast, which is not just for people that are diabetic. It gives um, activities and uh, recipes for everyone. So there is a uh, lot of good magazines um, that we can choose from. Yeah, and as well as magazines, we have over 460 newspaper publications mm -hmm. um, here stateside, and we also have 15 uh, international newspapers. Uh, we just added another Jerusalem newspaper to the publication as well. So um, we just want you to know that there's a myriad of um, ways to access it, whether it's with your, uh, an app on your phones, or whether so you can use an Android phone, or you can use your landline phone, computer, and also other devices uh, such as a Victor Reader Stream, uh, uh, as well as the um, uh, publication that we do have that uh, that uh, we I really do enjoy as well. I like to mention um, is the Indianapolis Recorder. So those that are in the Indianapolis area can access the Indianapolis Recorder, uh, one of the first uh, African-American publications uh, added to um, uh, NFB Newsline. So uh, we'll take a short pause and we'll come back with our guest as a, a, an avid user of the services as well as a very interesting personality. So stay tuned and we'll be right back with you. If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. I use NFB Newsline when reading Hammond Northwest Times. Using NFB Newsline, I read the Christian Science Magazine. Dad, you read Jerusalem Post too. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. the life you want. Read NFB Newsline. It's free. I am a blind vendor, and one of the things that I truly miss is reading Vending Times magazine. Hoosiers can hear Indiana magazines, circulars, national magazines, and information from across the globe. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. It is a fantastic service. Subscribe free to NFB Newsline today.
Okay, welcome back to the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana Monthly Report. And today we have a very special guest. And Florence, you want to introduce our guest today? I certainly would. Um, today we have a very special guest and uh, friend, uh, Mr. Charles Bennett. And um, we call him Charlie V. Charlie V, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. It's good to be here with y'all. You know, Charlie B., you have used the NFB Newsline service. Uh, now, what did you think about the service um, uh, during the usage period? I thought it was an excellent service and one that's easy to access. And it has a lot of benefits for because you have a lot of different things on it. So for uh, blind people, visually impaired people that, you know, couldn't read a newspaper, you can get them, and that, that's what I did uh, a lot, was listen to the newspaper. Uh, I did the recorder, I've done the Star. Uh, I'm going to do the Washington Post and probably the New York Times, although I get them on my iPhone. <clears throat> Rather than use up all that data, I, I just go to Newsline and, and uh, have it read to me. Well, that's, that's a good thing because uh, you have total control over what you want to listen to. You just don't have to listen to um, the article. If there's an article that you say, well, I really don't want to listen to that article, uh, you can either swipe or you can either press the three button off the keypad um, on a landline phone and move forward. Uh, so there's a myriad of ways that you just have total control over the, um, what you're listening to. And uh, you can create um, your own uh, features on that. You know, uh, I like to create uh, my own newspaper or in my own segment of newspapers. Generally, I create the sports sections. So I can just go to each of the cities that my sports teams are doing well in. If they're not doing well, I don't go to those sections. And, and, um, but I go to those and listen to uh, just the sports section by itself without having to uh, uh, go through the complete newspaper. And that's a great added um, feature to the service as well. And then I think, Florence, what I also like to do is if, I'm on, uh, if I want to save an article, if I'm reading an article and say like it's about our, produ our producer, Jeff, uh, if I was reading an article about him and I said, dang, I want to save that article, well, then I can save that article from my phone to my inbox. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and that's a great feature to have because a lot of people save obituaries like that. A lot of people do. And so, uh, I have, what I set up is my favorites. So I have a lot of magazines that I read quite often. So I can go into the favorites and just pull those up. And uh, one of the um, subscribers made a statement and said what he really likes about Newsline is like having global news right at his fingertips, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That's what I like is, you know, being able, since you have your international papers, you know, I can go to headline news with, breaking news, you know, stuff like that. That's kind of what I seek out is world knowledge to know what's going on, you know, everywhere. Yeah, because I know when I demonstrate it <clears throat> to my grandchildren sometime, and at one time I was reading the uh, China newspaper, and in the publication it stated that um, a driver was arrested for drunken driving. and. The grandson said, you mean they drink and drive in China? Mm -hmm. You know, so it gives them an idea of uh, what goes on that human life is still human life uh, uh, around the world. So, you know, we're going to take a short pause and uh, we're going to come back and learn a little bit about uh, the uh, Mr. Charlie Bennett, which we call Charlie B. Uh, and see just what uh, his life journey is uh, through blindness. So join us, we'll be right back.
I'm Danny Wayne Beamer, Program Manager of the Elder Blind Program at the Will Center in Terre Haute, Indiana. I introduce the NFB Newsline to seniors in 13 southwestern counties in Indiana. I also utilize the NFB Newsline for my radio station public affairs shows. The NFB Newsline. Experience it today. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are We want to welcome you back to our show, the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana Monthly Report. And Florence, would you introduce our guest? I again? certainly will. Again, we have Mr. Charlie Bennett, uh, Charlie B, music man, minister. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Uh, um, again, really uh, appreciate this opportunity to be here with you. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Charlie B that I've listened to some of your music before and I've heard you play and I have really enjoyed uh, listening to your music. I just wished I could get more of it. So, um, Charles, I want to know, were you, were you born blind or just how did you lose your sight? I was born uh, really, really legally blind. Okay, I, I could see, oh, I could see people, I could see the sky, I could see the grass, I could see objects, but I couldn't see that far. I was born with glaucoma, so at the age of four, they had a, I had an emergency surgery to take that eye out, where I was rushed from Richmond, Indiana to Ann Arbor, Michigan <clears throat> in an ambulance because uh, the pressure had built up so, much, so tough that it was knocking me out then I'd wake up, it knocked me out again. So they had to take that one, and I lost the last one at seven. Now, after I lost that last eye, I realized that, because I was already, you know, like I say, legally blind, but I realized I had two choices. I could get up, or I could lay down and give up. And I chose to get, get up, so I went through some some trials, just learning how to deal with living without sight. But God is good, and I accomplished that. I, I ride bikes. I played basketball, you know, played a little baseball. I did things that sighted kids did normally. So I taught myself how to do a lot of that, and it made me a better person. It made me a stronger person, and it taught me not to not to ever give up, because, like I said, God will bring you through these situations if you just allow Him to, and have faith that He will. So I I just continue to grow, you know, through life. Now, and, as a with your parents, uh, parenting in, in the household itself, uh, oftentimes parents uh, don't know what to do. Um, when they have the situation. They really don't know where to turn as far as agencies and, and resources. So um, you know, can you tell me a little bit about uh, how that was addressed? My parents never sheltered me, and they <clears throat> heard it from aunties and uncles. I, I'll give you a good example. I was riding my bike one day, and my aunt, was coming over and I zipped around her car and flew down the street and went where I was going. Well, she thought I was one of my brothers and then she went in the house and see both of them. So then she's going off on my mom about why are you, why was he on that bike? Well, mom said, I can't keep him, I can't keep him down. Now then they found out about the blind school and I did get a good education. Uh, they took me there. Uh, I didn't really care for being left there, you know, at such a young age. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, I had issues with that, but I finally got used to it. And I had, like I say, I had a real good education there and it prepared me because I, uh, my junior and senior year in high school, I went to high, I went to Richmond High School because I wanted to identify with the same school my brothers and sisters went to 
and I wanted to march in the band. And as far as we know, I was the first blind person in Indiana to march in a band of 283. Uh, I marched down at Riverfront <clears throat> for the Bengals uh, Steelers game. Now that was a challenging situation because of the carpet and the sound totally went away from me. So the people on each side, I couldn't hear them. So I had to, I had to march straight, I had to do my designs that were designed. I had to mark in my head, because you know everybody else had their music hanging down from them big hats. But I had to mark in my head what note, whether it was a half note, quarter note, whatever kind of note it was that we had to like do a pinwheel or do some kind of formation. And I was blessed to do it, and it was fun. It was really, I really enjoyed it. So you learned the notes, uh, the musical notes by, uh, now how exactly did you, I guess I'm trying to follow where you are right now. Okay, I, I learned the music. Okay, we had two days to learn the music and the routine. Mm -hmm. So they had somebody tape the music for me and then I had to go home and learn it. Uh, you know, I, I always have my music learned by the end of Monday, you know, because like I say, we had to have that by Wednesday, and I had to figure out, you know, in the music where I was doing these different designs, you know, because uh, we, like I say, we had pinwheels, we had different formations, different turns we had to do. So I had to figure all that out in the music that I'm playing mm -hmm. and do it on the run. Now, tell me, um, just out of curiosity, um, now, you, you, your music reading, um, now, you, you, did you, is that bra did you learn it from Braille or? Okay, I did, Braille, did, that, I did Braille music at the blind school, mm -hmm. but when I got to public school, uh, I'm not gonna throw nobody under the bus, but they couldn't get the Braille music for me. We'll just leave that there. Uh, so I had to learn it by ear, which helped me in my professional career because most of the people that you play for uh, in profession now, that the sighted people have sheet music. But there again, I had to learn my music from tape or CD and you know, have it ready. Okay. So I developed a good ear you know, to listening and learning on the spot. I mean, I've stepped on stage with people that I don't have never known and hear a few notes of the song and I can figure out the whole song. That's oh. very interesting that you um, have those type of uh, gifts, I would say. Um, you know, because we, you know, National Federation of Blind, we know, believe that uh, Braille leaders, Braille readers are leaders. And, um, you know, you certainly um, uh, exemplify that through your musical talents um, and, and the gift of um, how you just put your music together and perform. So, um, yeah, so like we were talking about, the Indiana School for the Blind and Vision Impaired that you attended, um, and you went to Richmond, Indiana, uh -huh. and you graduated from there. So, um, you know, integrating into mainstream school as a blind um, student, uh, would you want to expound on that just a little bit? It was different, and at points, it was difficult because of acceptance. You know, and, uh, when you when you first, when I was first integrated in there, you know, I got a lot of support, but then you also found that a lot of people didn't really, because they didn't know about blindness, you know, they treated you different, you know, because as you know, mainstream a lot of mainstream society looks at blindness as, if not the lowest, so close to the lowest, you know. Uh, back then, that's the way they looked at it because we didn't, you know, uh, you had blind people, they knew they were blind people, but they didn't think we could do normal things. Uh, I guess that's the way I'm trying to say it. So it was, it was, like I say, it was encouraging and it was discouraging. So you had both, you had both, both spectrums. 
It's very interesting because uh, education, we know, is the key. And like you said, you were having problems uh, getting the Braille uh, so that you can uh, sheet music in Braille and, and learning it that way. Um, uh, that you know, that's that's a travesty. And well, uh, I also had problem getting braille books, so I had oh, to have. Oh yes, yes. I had to have readers, you know, and mm. uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to be real nice about this, but the state should have provided me braille books in high school, but that didn't happen. So, I mean, I got some of them, but I didn't get a lot of them. So I, I did have to utilize readers and. For me, I would prefer to read it myself because, you know, I've done Braille all my life. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I've done Braille, you know, I learned Braille, like, when I was six. So, you know, by the time I'm 16, 17, I read and write real good, you know. So I wanted them books. But, you know, like I said, it was, it was hard to get, and I just had to get through that. You know, because I'm like, well, that's just a stumbling block. I got to, I got to do it another way. And, and you know, the barriers that are placed upon us as uh, and our children uh, and adults as blind citizens. You know, one of the things we like to do is try to bridge gaps of visible differences. And through the uh, National Federation of the Blind. Uh, where we're uh, in front of Congress right now is uh, access to instructional materials for higher education. That issue still prevails today, uh, even after you, uh, long after you graduated from high school. So uh, that's an issue that we're taking up. And um, for people that want to learn more about what the National Federation is, uh, the Blind is doing uh, at this point in time, as far as advocacy, as far as legislation, visit the website in fb.org and you'll learn a lot there about our advocacy. So we're going to take a pause and we'll be right back and with our guest Mr. Charlie B. wrap up our show. Stay tuned. I just graduated college as a blind student. How can I independently find job listings? Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. It is a fantastic service. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. The National Federation of the Blind knows that blindness is not the characteristic that defines you or your future. Every day we raise the expectations of blind people because low expectations create obstacles between blind people and our dreams. You can live the life you want. Blindness is not what holds you back. We want to welcome you back to our show and we're uh, having a great conversation here with our guest, Mr. Charlie B, or Charlie Bennett, as we know him. And Florence, let's uh, carry this conversation forward. Mr. Bennett, and then we talked about your music, you being a music man, and um, there's other things going on in your life as well. And um, let's talk about your ministry. Well, several years ago, probably in the 80s, God had called me to preach, and I ran and ran, because I first thought it was just something in my head, but he showed me that it was him that was speaking to me. So about five, uh, four or five years ago, I accepted my calling and I got ordained and I'm now uh, preaching from time to time at you know different churches. I'm not a pastor, I'm not an associate minister, but when, uh, when he calls me, you know, to preach, then I go and preach, and I, I really enjoy it. It's it's a beautiful feeling when you're being led by the Spirit, and you know that this knowledge is not coming from you, exactly, but that it's coming from God. So when I stand before His people, one, I study to make sure that you know I'm doing the right thing, saying the right thing, because I always want to speak what thus saith the Lord and not what saith Elder Charlie. Because uh, it's not about me, it's about him. 
It's about God. And there's, there's spiritual strength, and there's just all kind of, you become a more loving person <clears throat> because you begin to understand what God wants for you and out of you. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's made a, a huge difference in my life. And I mean, I still play professionally, uh, but now that's that's my first my f my first business now mm -hmm. is is serving God, and I can still do everything else I do, but I have to keep Him first, that He'll direct my paths and my ways, and He opens doors for me, you know, because when He when I first got that call, the first question that I had to God was, "Who gonna listen to me? I'm blind," and the way society treats us. You know, I'm thinking, no, maybe not. But what I realized is when he calls you, he makes a way, and you will have somebody that hears you. Exactly. And one thing that I understand as well is that whatever it is that happens in our life, Charlie, God has already equipped us. That's right, and he does. He equips you for whatever he calls you to do. Totally. Totally. Well, you know, uh, we, we've heard that uh, not only from you, but other blind um, uh, ministers or individuals that is, uh, uh, in the ministry, you know, about credibility of uh, being a blind person and um, sharing the word and people accepting what you say. I know there's scripture that relates to that, but, um, you, you know, I, I really want to thank you for coming on to our show. I know a lot of people are saying, well, how in the world is he doing this, uh, reading the Bible? Okay, can you quickly tell me, uh, how do you read the Bible? Are you using Braille? Are you using Audible? Or what are you doing? I use Braille. Okay, mm -hmm. I've used the Audible, and it puts me to sleep. <laughs> but no, I prefer to use Braille. Now, like, when I, when I get a call to preach on a Sunday, <clears throat> the first thing I do is pray about what God wants me to preach about. Then I go to the Word. He leads me to the scriptures I need. I write them down in Braille. And that way I don't, because as you might or might not know, uh, there's 66 books in the Bible. In Braille, there's 18 volumes. So you really don't want to be carrying around. Yeah, because those, 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 those volumes are uh, almost like uh, um, yeah, one of the big... Uh, Encyclopedias. Yeah, yes. yeah, that's, exactly. That's, that's what I equate them because, to. Because Braille, Braille takes up so much volume. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, it's like, three, it's like three pages of Braille is one page of print. Mm -hmm. So there you go. By the time it comes for me to preach, I just let God use me. And he's given me the word. He's given me the scriptures. He's increased it in me. And I just let him use me in his own way. And it works out. Well, I'll tell you what. We want to thank you once again for coming on to the show and sharing with us. Uh, we still have a lot of advocacy to do. Uh, we have a lot of bridging gaps of visible differences to do throughout our community and our societies. So, Charlie B., I just want to thank you once again for coming on and sharing so much valuable information and to our listening and viewing audience, we trust to see you again next week as we have a very exciting guest coming on that I most certainly know that you wouldn't want to miss this international guest. The National Federation of the Blind, Indiana Monthly Report. For more information, go to nfb-in.org or call 855-963-6476. That's 855-963-6476. The National Federation of the Blind encourages you to live the life you want.